Hey, hey friend, it's MJ Gordon here. So we're all in this really weird, awkward, global sort of quarantine situation. And while this situation might have seemed really cool and fun at first, hey, some of us get to work from home, we get kind of a forced vacation, the reality is starting to creep in. Some of us are feeling extremely bored, extremely cabin fevered, a lot of us feel stuck, we don't know what to do with our time, we've exhausted our time in front of the TV watching Netflix and YouTube videos. And while I did a video recently about how to get the most value out of quarantine life, there is one specific thing that I recommend to get the most value out of quarantine life. That one specific thing is to try to become a minimalist. Minimalism is one of the best ways to create more time, money, energy, and just overall fulfillment in your life. There are many videos, many articles that show this, and if you really dig deep into it, it's not about how much stuff you own, it's really about a philosophy or a way of perceiving and approaching life. The second argument that I have for at least giving it a try is that if you're bored or feeling stuck anyways, maybe you can walk away with an experience that gives you at least a little bit more value into your life. So today we're gonna to talk about how you can utilize this time and space during quarantine to either try or become a minimalist in as little as five steps. The first step might be the obvious, which is to declutter your home. Whether you're looking into Marie Kondo styles of decluttering or the minimalist or capsuling your wardrobe, decluttering your home gives you something positive and productive to do and you end up with a really nice result. I want you to keep in mind here that the idea is not to count a specific number of items per se, it's just to really identify what adds value to you or as Marie Kondo would say, sparks joy. I sort of have an oversimplified approach to this, which is basically taking all the things that I know that I need, I use day in, day out, it totally adds value. And then I also combine that with things that I'm inspired by. And inspiration can be more of an aesthetic thing. Like a lot of times I like walking into a room, making it feel simple and fresh, or I want certain areas or aspects to be more cohesive with my lifestyle. Something like that could be like the storage bin right behind me. This holds all my supplies for work and I'm able to segment them without storing them in a place that creates visual clutter. The cool thing about quarantine is it makes step two really easy, which is just pack it away or place it in boxes for donation or selling. Simply put, you're just gonna let the rest go. Now, me and my daughter took the time to do a packing party, which is a technique that is formed by the minimalist, where you simply put everything into a box, and if you don't use it, you leave it in that box, and then you figure out what to do with it later, donate it or sell it. What I like about the packing party is you can put this away and tuck it somewhere where you can't see it, but you don't necessarily have to let it go so you don't have to deal with the conflict of making a mistake or regretting that the item is gone after a certain period of time maybe post quarantine or six months down the line you can decide whether or not it's something that is of value to you that you still want to keep or if you could share it with somebody by donating or selling let me know in the comments below if you want me to share with you some of my favorite places to sell used items online I have different places that I sell for different categories of items and I found a way that's most efficient to get the most bang for my buck as well as marketing to the right audience who actually are looking for items that I'm selling. After you've completed decluttering and reorganizing your whole house, the space should feel refreshed, you should feel really good, and hopefully more inspired to take it on to the next step, which is now to declutter more of the non-materialistic things, and that is your spending. If you haven't noticed already, maybe staying at home has caused you to spend less, or in my case, spend more, because I have more time to browse. But while Hulu and Netflix might add tremendous value for you now, maybe think about what you can swap it with that could add more value. Some ideas might be a yoga or fitness program online. So instead of binge eating in front of Netflix, you're actually getting healthy and doing something productive. I've personally signed up for some business courses and have been listening to way more audiobooks than I normally do. And if you're more inspired to level up your time, money, and energy, you can feel free to check out the Everyday Vacation, which is a course that I set up rooted in the philosophy of minimalism, but also taking the time to find value and create systems for your time, money, energy, and mindset. Regardless of what you do, make a list of the things that you spend on and start eliminating some of the things off this list. There's some subscriptions that you have that you probably don't even know. There's extra spending that you might've been spending on prior to quarantine that you realize you don't need to spend on anymore. And then take the time to see if there's things you can swap for something of more value like we just discussed. Even if you wanna keep Netflix and Hulu for now, I totally understand. Think about maybe moving away from that when you get back to your daily routine. Now, I don't know about you, but once I got step one through three done, I just felt like, 
like a big burden has been lifted off my shoulders. I felt more clarity, more aware of what was in my life, what was adding value, what I was spending my time and money on. That takes me to step number four, which is to move into decluttering your digital clutter. Now, before you groan, I totally understand. I'm a media producer, I produce tons of media day in and day out, and I have a ton of digital clutter. But what I wanna encourage is a clean desktop and smartphone experience because you have limited apps and only the apps that add value. You have a more fluid and enjoyable experience looking through old photos and videos because it pertains only to the special moments that you wanted to keep or that add value to your memory of whatever you're taking photos and videos of. And ultimately less distraction and more time and energy when when you're on any of your devices. So in the beginning, if you've just been letting this stuff kind of clutter your phone and your computer or your external hard drive, this is going to be quite a task. But what I've decided for myself was having a system in place going forward so that I could avoid having to go back and do this massive decluttering haul, so to speak. And the first thing that I do is when I take photos, I tend to take a ton because I've got kids, I've got dogs. Usually it's with a lot of people. So you're taking like 50 photos to try to get that one shot. And then what I'll do is I'll pick one or two, maybe three of my favorite shots and I'll delete it all like right off the bat. Now, if I'm busy and I'm out somewhere, I'll review those photos at the end of the day. Typically something I do because I'm with people who want me to share. And then I'm gonna delete the ones that don't add any value or that are just duplicates or a little bit excessive. Step two, I use an automatic cloud where the photos update and get stored into the cloud. And every once in a while, ideally once every month or two, I'll go into the cloud and start to categorize these photos into different folders within the cloud. When I'm ready, which is every six months or so, I back up these photos onto an external hard drive as well. And voila, you have very clean, very easy to navigate files, which are so enjoyable to look through when they're organized in this sense. In the past, it was just like everything was dumped into one spot and then you're like looking at 20 different random photos, sometimes screenshots of things, and you're kind of like, this feels like a mess. I highly, highly recommend decluttering your digital items. It feels so good since we live in a digital space for most of our time every single day. And if you do have lots of paperwork and other things that you could digitalize, I recommend doing that too. The last step is what I call the EVP, which is an everyday vacation process. And EVP also stands for the three steps of the everyday vacation process. E being start to identify your elements. This is something that we go into the everyday vacation course. We talk about the elements that are really key for you to live your best life possible and to create a life on your terms. And then we move into how much value does it add, what adds value currently, and what we need to swap, declutter, et cetera. Basically the same process that you've gone through in steps one through four. And P stands for prepare, then progress. Even though you've decluttered your home, your wardrobe, your finances, your digital stuff, it's really important to now fill that space with either things that add value, the things that you really wanted to have time for but never did, productive habits, lifestyle goals, maybe that side hustle that you never started that you you could now because you have the time and space to maybe those conversations that you wish you had with people but you didn't because you were always so busy minimalism is not about the amount of stuff you have it's about cultivating a conscious state of being giving attention and energy to the things that add value to your life and progress you to that next level of value and fulfillment that you can experience Regardless of what minimalism looks like for many people, I believe anybody can practice the philosophy of minimalism and get tons of benefit in their time, money, and energy and ultimate fulfillment that they experience in life. So I hope that this video has inspired you to at least try becoming a minimalist in these five steps during this quarantine time. If you like this video, hit thumbs up and let me know in the comments below. Do you consider yourself a minimalist? Are you interested in minimalism? If so, why? And thank you so much for joining me here. I'll see you guys in the next episode. Ciao.